Good evening. It's 8 o'clock on this fourth day of October. I'm Yvonne Okwara Matole. Our big story today, we're focusing on the state of the race. The IEBC chairman, Wafula Chebukati, stated that the commission had successful separate talks with both NASA and Jubilee presidential candidates with the hope of a joint meeting before the presidential repeat poll that is only now just three weeks away. Listen. And indeed, there have been calls from different stakeholders to have the two sides sit down and speedily settle matters. Meanwhile, Jubilee has urged IEBC to consult members of parliament on electoral laws, while NASA maintains it will not go back to the polls under the same circumstances it did in the last general election. We cannot expect us to do the same thing the same way and expect a different result. So you believe it's... All right, and on the program tonight, on the big story, we'll definitely try and get this from as many angles as we can. And so here's who we have tonight, as always. Our lead reporter, Sophia Wanuna, is out in the field, and she will be speaking uh, to Senator Johnson Sakaja. He's a senator for Nairobi County. He attended uh, those uh, hearings today, where they were getting views from the public on those proposed amendments to the electoral laws in this country. Also tonight, we'll be speaking to lawyer Wils uh, Willi Willis Sotieno, who is in the NASA presidential campaign secretariat. Also later on, I'll be speaking to Anthony Anthony Olwoch, who's the Madari Member of Parliament. Welcome to the big program tonight. That is who we have. The hashtag online is the big story at KTN News at Yvonne Okwara. You can tweet Sophia Wanuna as well at Sophia Wanuna. So let's get straight to our lead reporter on the show, Sophia Wanuna. Um, Sophia, before we get to hear from the senator, perhaps you can just lay the land for us today. It was day two. Uh, the select committee was hearing views from the public. Um, also, a number of reactions have come in uh, from uh, more members of the international community. Sophia? Good evening, Yvonne. Yes, a busy day in as far as that uh, lead up to the repeat presidential poll, those uh, hearings, public hearings of the elections law amendment bill ongoing at County Hall and ve several groups presenting uh, before the team. It's a joint team of both Houses of Parliament, the National Assembly, as well as the Senate. And we'll be speaking to the Nairobi Senator, who is a member of that joint team, to tell us about what emerged from that, the people who got to address uh, the parliamentary team, but also uh, sentiments from various groups internationally national community as well as here. We've heard from the UN today as well as the Carter Center that was one of the observer groups uh, during the 8th of August general elections and really castigating uh, the politicians in as far as some of the very tough and hardline positions that have been taken in the lead up to the 26th of o October repeat poll. So on one hand in as far as these amendments, uh, the group saying that this should not be happening at this particular time. Uh, IBC should be given time to prepare for the repeat poll and also calling uh, on the NASA side to pull off and, and really just move away from this uh, very grandstanding that some have described it as in as far as the irreducible minimums are concerned, saying uh, that all parties need to sit together, but at the same time allow IEBC as the eyes independent to do their work so that they can prepare without any interference and really uh, forcing of their hands to do certain things because in the end, everybody will not be satisfied in as far as making making their parties uh, happy, the both parties involved in this particular election. We also had from the NCCK as well calling upon Jubilee on this uh, uh, amendments uh, to the Elections Act, saying that the timing is wrong. It does not allow for the IBC to focus on their work, uh, as well as ACK. We had from them yesterday, U.S. ambassador uh, led a team of other ambassadors and high commissioners as well in their statement. And pretty much they all appear to be reading from the same script, Yvonne. They're saying, for now, NASA, the irreducible minimum, some of them, at least in as far as the timelines that exist to go to the repeat poll, 
they're unrealistic and at least there should be a conversation that happens with all parties so that they agree it cannot be my way or the highway and for jubilee saying the laws as well this time uh they've talked about uh, best international practice saying to have changes to such critical laws uh with just 20 now two days i think to go to the repeat poll is uh not acceptable is not best practice is not even good for the iebc and all parties that will be involved in conducting the fresh poll but let's uh, hear now from uh, senator sakaja he is a member of that joint committee. Uh, I'm a committee, however, that does not have input or at least membership of the National Super Alliance. They chose not to be part of it. And let's start there, Sakaja, because we have had many people uh, from the international community, uh, organizations here as well, say this one, and first of all, is an exercise that should, should not be happening with the timeline we have to the repeat poll. What's your comment on that? I think um, parliament is alive and uh, parliament is performing its role. Um, completely within the mandate of parliament. Um, and, and some of these uh, changes that are being proposed, of course, as a member of the committee to which these uh, laws have been uh, subjected to, mm -hmm. our work is to listen to all of the opinions. Um, we've had some who are dissenting, we've had uh, uh, many more who are you know, in agreement that th these things need to be done. Yeah. Um, but they are drawn mainly from the ruling of the Supreme Court. And what most judges would always say, you know, in, in, in the rulings, is that nothing would have been easier for Parliament to provide for this and that. So we're just sealing the loopholes that have been identified by the judiciary. And in fact, nothing in those laws affects the workings within the IABC. Mm -hmm. Many of the people castigating in terms of time and, you know, saying this should not be done have not actually read the amendments. In fact, of all the statements you've mentioned, whether it is the Carter Center or the, the, the UN. you know the UN or NCCK, I, I am sure, and you have all the statements, none of them has mentioned any single provision um, which, in their opinion, would affect the IBC doing its work. So, of course, it would be very irresponsible of a parliament that is already um, constituted, that is already working, to have had that. Yet the, and the Constitution provides that Parliament is only law-making function to again go blindly again to an election without sorting out the problems that have been identified by the courts themselves before an election. But the majority judgment in any way highlights laws being the issue. Or did it say that their laws are in place but they were not followed? The irregularities, like you run I beg your pardon, and illegalities, uh, but not that the laws were wanting. Well, you know, um, not in, in, in those words specifically, but if you look at uh, some of the issues that have come up where they say that then this is what the law provides and this is then how we look at it, mm. and then uh, Maraga saying himself, uh, you know, in no uncertain terms, that if a petition comes again within the same context on the same issues, his ruling would be the same. So why should we lead ourselves down a path that we know, you know, would not work? All of us know that, uh, to you know, in many respects, um, the technology failed in certain respects. What is the harm of Parliament saying that then, if technology fails in this and one or two respect, then this is our fallback position? You know, based on that, it's it's only wise to provide for that. Mm -hmm. um, for them saying that uh, um, where there has been uh, irregularity or there has been um, even an illegality, but that does not affect the numbers, that they'll still rule in that way. What harms Parliament in saying that despite there being um, an irregularity here or there, because there's no perfect election anywhere in the world, so long as the court is satisfied that the principles of the election have been followed and that those irregularities have not affected the outcome, yeah. then they cannot nullify an election. Because, Senator, there are those who would argue perhaps you should be supporting NASA to help IEBC clean house because it was up to IEBC, the judges said, get your house in order, let things work as they should. But now Parliament has taken this res responsibility to change laws that we saw both, ha both parties come together in a bipartisan fashion um, at uh, Windsor, at the JPSC. But now you look like you're bulldozing your way. Actually, the people who are bulldozing their way is NASA because NASA members have been sworn in as members of Parliament. Um, then they have decided to abscond duty um, to give up their roles and not to attend Parliament. All they do when they come to Parliament is go to, you know, follow up their salaries um, or, you know, just to socialize. Yet Kenyans are paying them to do this work. But why so did you engage them before? We have engaged them repeatedly. In fact, when this bill was brought um, and, 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 and the motion to set up another committee, the request was for them to present their names to that committee. 
if today they feel that they want to join the, the, that committee, a special study of the house will be done within 24 hours. Instead to bring of them to a committee, getting them the ones to join have, a committee, yes. wouldn't it have been prudent to get them to first get to get, put these laws together? That is done in parliament. You know, we have a law and we have institutions created by this country. Mm -hmm. Kenyans vote for different parties. So that all leaders can be able to go to parliament as a platform for all of these discussions to take place. Now, just because we are, you know, we could be more than them, does not mean that their voices will not be heard. In fact, today we've had very many interesting observations, observations from the public, mm -hmm. some of whom are not uh, in agreement with the law, but have proposed amendments. You know, they have proposed that actually, if you go with this law, please change this. And they're very interesting suggestions. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that the committee would benefit greatly if NASA uh, was a part of it. What are some of those duty. that stand out that you've heard today? Um, you know, uh, for instance, um, there was a gentleman um, who even designed uh, Form 34 and said, you know, this is how it probably should look like. That uh, because there was a question of results coming in as, as early as 5 or 7 ETC, that in that form also include a timestamp. You know, I mean, that's an interesting, uh, uh, you know, proposal from, from a member of the public. Somebody else says that if you're saying yes, that, uh, you know, if in, in the absence of the chair, if the vice chair is not there, um, then the vice chair, you know, um, takes over. And if the vice chair is not there, then another commissioner. Somebody proposed that, you know what, you must uh, determine what absence is. It cannot be that the chairman is caught in traffic. Um, and then now he comes and there's a new chair, and how does he get back his position, you see? I mean, there have been very interesting proposals. Okay. Parliament comes from the word parlance, to parley. Kenyans have elected us to go and discuss matters, according to Article 95 and 96, of concern to them. You cannot change laws. You cannot uh, determine the course of a country in the streets while we have institutions that actually provide for that. But also the same about, constitution allows for going to the streets, for picketing, for demonstrations. Yes, but not as a legislative body. You know, uh, the, the street is to express yourself. But, but once Kenyans have elected you to express their views in a house that has a lawmaking power, mm -hmm. then that's the place you must be. Okay. You know. There are those who are saying, on one hand, NASA have their reducible minimums. And the argument has been that Jubilee, with this bill, these are their irreducible minimums, your irreducible minimums, just dressed in a different way to not appear to be grandstanding. But in essence, you really are. No, these are not our irreducible minimums. If the bill, first of all, the work of the committee is not final. The committee has not proposed the bill. The bill has been, uh, you know, sent to the committee to, to look at it and mm -hmm. to uh, engage the public. And the response has been overwhelming. Mm -hmm. But once the committee does its report, first of all, the committee can either agree or refuse, you know, with, 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 with the proposals in the bill. It comes to the House. Mm -hmm. NASA will be there in the House. NASA can vote no. NASA can vote yes, or, as is expected, can decide altogether not to come to the House. Mm -hmm. So these things are not cast in stone. But who determines who's in the House? It's, the, it's, it's, it's Kenyans. And the Constitution is very clear that all sovereign power rests with the people. So it must be the say of the people, not the say of the Qatar Center or the UN or the NCCK. In fact, for the NCCK, instead of giving their views at a press conference, why don't they join the other religious leaders who come to parliament to give their views. Why don't they join, um, you know, we've invited NASA to come as a party. You dismissed the Qatar Center now, but remember during the Supreme Court petition, it was one, the, the lead uh, uh, observer, that is a former uh, U.S. Secretary of State, whose clip was played to show that the international community gave a green light. First of all, you know, it's not the believe that played the clip. But secondly, their role as an observer is an internationally accepted role. You know, so the um, president's council and he's it's, part of Jubilee. It's, 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 it's an internationally accepted role that they play as observers. Mm -hmm. But to determine when a body that makes law, that is an expression of the sovereignty of the people, should sit and work and when they should not work is beyond the, the limit of their mandate. Mm -hmm. You know, no one can tell us, okay, Kenyans, between uh, September and October, you should not be represented in parliament. No. So parliament is alive. And, and, and it will be very, very, very irresponsible of us, knowing full well that the judgment says these are the loopholes, not to address those loopholes. Okay. And we're inviting NASA, even if they're to come tomorrow, yes. for them to come, sit down, let us discuss this. Um, there, uh, there are many representatives that are sent through different groups, we uh -huh. could tell, and we've listened to them. And I'm sure even the form um, of the, and of course without preempting, because I'm not supposed to you know, preempt uh, the outcome of the uh, committee's deliberations, yes. but I'm sure a lot of those um, views will be taken into account and possibly 
the proposals by the committee might be a, li a little different from what the bill looks like now. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Nairobi County Johnson Sakaja. And Yvonne, you've heard what the senator had to say, that definitely uh, they are within their mandate, executing their mandate uh, at, in Parliament, uh, both houses sitting in this joint committee. Yvonne. It's uh, interesting uh, that he's talked about that, particularly that the NASA uh, members of uh, Parliament are absconding their duty with respect to this bill. Um, so that's where we'll pick it up from. And uh, like I told you, we have Anthony Oloch, who's a Madari member of Parliament, is joining us from our city centre studios. Uh, Anthony, good evening. Welcome to the big story tonight. We're focusing, of course, on those amendments. Um, I wonder if you've had a moment to hear what uh, Senator Sakaja has said. You are absconding responding your duty um, in not participating in this. Uh, members of, of your side were invited to be part of this committee. I know you've constantly given reasons as to why, including uh, the legality of Parliament, but uh, Senator Sakaja goes on to say that uh, you are within the precincts of Parliament and looking for your salaries rather than doing what actually sent you there. Oh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me. I've listened to what uh, Senator Sakaja, whom I respect very much, and what he has had to say. No, we are not sitting within the presence of parliament and earning salaries. We are very actively engaging in the business of serving the people. Remember, as members of parliament, uh, we are elected to do different things. As I sit here before this studio, I'm also exercising the mandate as member of parliament by appearing here. Uh, engaging with the people, we engage with people at different forums. And uh, the, 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 the right to, to stay away uh, from forums such as parliament, especially when the very setup of parliament is oppressive in terms of the numbers itself, uh, the so-called tyranny of numbers, it is not possible that we can have a meaningful engagement uh, that would have results that are desirable. You remember that uh, when you had a similar problem the last time, people came out and had talks about these talks. The international community mediated, the religious communities mediated, there were drafts that were passed across left, right, and then a select committee was appointed. That select committee had clear terms of reference. Um, it would have been much, much easier for Jubilee Party, even with their majority in parliament, to say yes, uh, the Supreme Court made certain decisions, and we think those uh, decisions affect, uh, in a fundamental way, the elections that is coming. So let's have a discussion on how we can be able to achieve this. The problem we have about uh, the manner in which they have approached this is that, one, they're trying to change the rules of the game midstream. There is in law what is usually called the fact that you cannot be a judge in your own course and a prosecutor at the same time. President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta is a presidential candidate. An election date and an election cycle has been declared. It is 60 days from the date of the judgment of the Supreme Court. Why would you want to change laws, make amendments in parliament, and as president, you're the same same person who will have to assent to these laws by putting your signature pursuant to okay. Article 150? So so, Anthony, what would yes. then be um, the, the goal um, if these amendments are to be passed into law, which uh, Jubilee uh, could easily do and the president could easily assent to these laws, it, you know, perhaps before uh, August the 26th, which is now just uh, October the 26th, excuse me, which is now just 21 days away. Um, so what would NASA's plan be then, particularly for the MPs in the House? Uh, there are options. Uh, the first option is that uh, it's in the reading of the Supreme Court judgment. It said, carry out another repeat election in its strict compliance with the law. And that is the demand that we have been making. So IBC has options. The bigger obligation is with the IEBC. IBC needs to demonstrate that they can be able to put up an election that would be above board, that would be in compliance with the Constitution, and the Supreme Court judgment. If they do not comply, there are options. The options lie in the Constitution itself, and I've been able to say on very many forums that a fallback would be under Article 1 of the Constitution. People have tried to argue that there will be no power vacuum, that President Uhuru Kenyatta 
remains president if an election does not take place. I beg to disagree. There will be no vacuum, but not in the sense that Uhuru will be president. The Constitution only contemplates an election within the context of three, three contexts, let me say. First of all, it's a general election under Article 136 and 138, an election that must be carried out within all the constituencies, the 290 constituencies. If an election does not take place in 290 constituencies, there is not a valid election. Another contemplation of when an election would take place is within 60 days as ordered by the Supreme Court, that is a fresh election. The other contemplation under the Constitution is when the president dies or there is some form of incapacity. If on the 26th there is no election, Uhuru Kenyatta can be not, cannot be president, and the fallback is under Article 1, and Senator Sakaja himself referred right. to it, that the ultimate exercise of power is with the people under Article okay. 1. Kenyans right. will sit down, they will come together, and they will decide their destiny All after right. the 26th. Uh, Anthony, you've talked about uh, the three scenarios. Um, there's one that's interesting, uh, yes. you know, uh, and according to law, if uh, the election does not happen in all the 290 constituencies, then it's considered invalid. I, I find that interesting. Would, would this be NASA's game plan to ensure that uh, even if it is in one constituency, that the election does not take place, thereby nullifying the whole process? Um, yes and no, because you know the, Constitu the Supreme Court itself said it in very loud words. Carry out an election is strict compliance. NASA is not going to go into an election that does not meet those prescriptions. So yes, Kenyans can in their sovereign will decide that we will not enter a fraudulent election. We have had too many uh, fraudulent past elections that have gone this way. We will not participate. And if in their decision they decide not to participate, even if in just one const constituency, that election cannot stand. So yes, that is an option. An election where there are two candidates, where there are two people, it must take place under Article 138 and read with 136 in 290 constituencies. I'm sorry, you said it is an option? Just to be clear that I, I heard you it correctly. It is an option. It is an option. So it is an option for what? NASA yes, to ensure an that elections do not happen in all the 290 constituencies? I do not speak on behalf of NASA, but I'm telling you, as part of our engagement, NASA and people of Kenya and NASA are members of this country. They will consider all options that are available. All options that are available. And Article uh, 138 that an election must take place in 290 constituencies, yes, it is an option. And, but and we how, don't have those elections. And how would you ensure exactly that an election does not take place in one, two, or all of the 290 constituencies? Uh, first of all, uh, the people are having a conversation, and the conversation is um, uh, uh, in the public domain. We have been uh, engaging. Uh, with our people, uh, there have been demonstrations all over the country uh, pursuant to Article 37. Uh, tomorrow we will have another set of demonstrations. Monday we will have another set of demonstrations. We are constantly in touch with the electorate and the people of Kenya. And the conversation we want the people of Kenya to sit down and understand is that we must not just have another election. If you're going to go into an election for the sake of an election, what we are saying, atibora uchaguzi, we want an uchaguzi bora, not bora so, uchaguzi. So the so demonstrations... If it is not going to be there, yes. So, Anthony, the demonstrations would be for the sole purpose of ensuring that elections do not happen in any of the constituencies? The demonstrations are in a bid to engage with the IEBC. We have given minimum uh, conditions. Uh, prior to this election. There are 12 points, things that we've said, you must uh, put in place uh, this before we can have an election. So the demonstrations are in a bid to try and get the IEBC won. There are people who are said to have badly mismanaged the elections, starting with Chiloba himself, the director of ICT, Muhati, Praxidi Storore, and a host of other people. There is a Mr. Chirchir outside of the commission itself. There is a Faricom. 
We have written uh, to the DPP. Uh, Anthony, and Anthony, allow me to interject. An election cannot take place. Anthony, allow me to interject because you're mentioning a number of people. Go ahead. Uh, Praxidis Torre um, has already resigned. Davis Chuchu, whom you mentioned, um, has in fact is now under investigation, at least according to the DPP. And the DPP acknowledged the letter and some of the evidence that was presented by NASA. So a lot of this is is already happening. Um, but you still want to be out on the streets and perhaps. Perhaps you can explain to our viewers, just before we take a break, how you hope to engage with IEBC out on the streets when there are negotiations and meetings that can take place um, in a perhaps better structured manner? Remember that IEBC has called a number of meetings which have not bore any fruit. When you invite the head of uh, NASA coalition, uh, himself a presidential candidate, and the other presidential candidate berates these meetings, he doesn't show up. IEB itself has not been able to demonstrate that they are taking our demand seriously. They have not come out and say that out of the 12 things, we will be able to do this. We cannot do this because of this. And in the end, the ultimate end, it appears to me as if these are talks heading nowhere. So we will continue to engage these people in the streets. If they will not listen to these demands, we will continue to exercise and invoke uh, the powers under Article 37 until these people either leave office or meet the demands that we are placing as NASA. All right. Thank you. Anthony Olwach, Madara Member of Parliament, here on The Big Story, speaking about uh, the stalled talks between IEBC, uh, the attempts at having tripartite talks between IEBC Jubilee and NASA. We also uh, did hear from Senator Sakaja a little earlier on, speaking about these hearings, saying NASA has been invited to the table and will not. Anthony Olwach says they're not going to be party to that. That is Anthony Olwach, who's the Madara Member of Parliament, but we'll be speaking to somebody who's much closer to the presidential candidate himself, and that is Willis Sotieno. He will be joining me in just a short moment from now. Once we take a break, we will return with him. Um, I'd like to get his uh, reactions to um, a number of reports that have come out from the Carter Center. The UN has also released a statement today. Plus, we'll be having that conversation on Safaricom's involvement in this election. All that after the break here on The Big Story.